Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to keep watching Napoleon in Italy. So far it's been really good. I noticed they changed a lot of how they presented it, which is cool, right? So this is Battle of Castiglione. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's going through Italy pretty smart, right? He took out Sardinia, right? Out of the war in since what? Was it 10 or 20 years? I don't remember, right? But something like that, right? All right, original videos down below. Let's go. An Epic History TV PMF Productions collaboration. May 1796. The French Revolutionary Wars have entered their fifth year. Wow. And on what most consider to be a secondary front, there has been a stunning development. Yep. A 26-year-old general of the French Republic, Napoleon Bonaparte, has waged a lightning campaign across northern Italy, defeating the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia and driving the Austrians across Lombardy. Look at that. Look when he started. He started on the 11th, 12th of April, right? And he got to the Battle of Lodi. He got to Milan basically in May. Right? In a month, basically. Right? In a month. And he took out Piedmont. Right? And the Austrians are moving east. Right? Astonishing. And this front was supposed to be the secondary to the Rhine campaign. Right? This just shows Napoleon's brilliance. Right? 2,000 Austrian troops remain holed up in Milan's citadel, but they cannot prevent his triumphal entry into the city on the 15th of May. Now, the French general holds court at the Palazzo Serbelloni, issuing wow. decrees on behalf of the Directory in Paris, while his troops enjoy several days' rest. That's good. Lombardy is to be reorganized as a French client state known as the Lombardic Republic. Political and economic reforms sweep away the old Austrian state to the delight of Italian intellectuals in cities like Milan. But the French uh, also demand 20 million francs yep. to help pay for the war. Well, Because what was Napoleon's grand speech to his army? He promised them riches because the rich cities in Italy, right? Like Milan, 20 million francs <laughs> at that time. I don't even know what that's worth today. Maybe someone can comment down below, but I don't know what's that worth today. I might check that up later and <laughs> let you know in the next video. Wow. Troops requisition vast quantities of food, horses, cattle and boots. Yep. Most inflammatory are their attacks on the property and dignity of the Catholic Church, which yep. enrage Italian priests and peasants, and are a gift to anti-French propagandists. Yep. On the 23rd of May, as Napoleon's troops set off in pursuit of the Austrians, revolt breaks out in Pavia. The next day, there are riots in Milan. Napoleon this makes sense. Races back to the city where order. Cause, cause, think about this. What are the French to the eyes of Christians, mainly Catholics, but Christians as a whole? The French Revolution is a revolution against Christianity, right? Sort of because they made this atheistic religion, right? And kicked out a lot of Catholics, killed a lot of priests, right? And they're looting churches, right? Yeah, that's not going to bode well in Italy, right? It just makes sense. But okay. Yeah, soon restored. But on the road to Pavia, at Binasco, he encounters a thousand armed rebels. Yep. Colonel we heard Brown's about these. Grenadiers rout the peasants, killing a hundred. Wow. Burning the village. Uh oh. A terrible example, which will be effective, Napoleon yep. writes. Pavia is retaken the next day with little opposition. 
a score of ringleaders, including several priests, wow. all shot. Hundreds of hostages are taken from prominent local families to ensure future cooperation. Which I mean makes sense, but again, that's this is this is something you have to do, but you might might not want to do it, right? But this is a precursor to what would happen in Spain because Italy and Spain are sort of at this time sort of the most Catholic, right? Obviously, France was also Catholic, but then the revolution hit, right? Austria is also very Catholic, but mainly Italy and Spain. And this is a very, very clear precursor to what, what the French would do in Spain, right? Not get along with the Catholic Church or the Catholics in Spain. Peasant revolts, civil unrest, executing civilians, priests, of course... Of course, militia as well, and armed rebels, right? Napoleon resumes his advance east. His army now organized into four divisions. Kilmaine's advance guard, Augereau, Massena... Kilmaine, that's a cool Italy. name. General Berlioz's Austrian army holds the line of the Mincho River, with Lake Garda on his right. And the Which makes sense because if he would have been to more of the west where Ponte San Marco with the Chiese River, he wouldn't have Lake Garda to his right. So this makes sense, although he's giving a lot of ground, right? And Mantua is this huge fortress which sits basically on the river, right? It's a sort of good defensive position, although you can see some holes in this position, and he might not have enough men. But okay. Great fortress of Mantua on his left. This, together with the fortresses at Peschiera, Verona, and Lagnago, forms the famous quadrilateral. Yep. Four Look at that. that cement Austria's grip on northern Italy. Because why is that? It makes sense because let's say. Napoleon concentrates and attacks at Mantua. Then forces at Verona could go to Mantua's aid. And Led Mago, they can come to aid to Mantua. And vice versa, if Napoleon attacks somewhere else, they can go there, right? So this is a very good defensive position. Although you can see some flaws with it. And especially this is Bonaparte, right? Napoleon Bonaparte, let's see. But once more... Bolio can't get a read on Napoleon's movements. Yeah. He scatters his troops, trying uh -oh. to defend four potential crossing points, and is further distracted by fake preparations to cross Lake Garda by yep. boat. In fact, Napoleon has decided to cross the Mincho at Borghetto. And when Kilmaine's advance guard arrives, they find the bridge defended by a single battalion of infantry, uh -oh. a handful of hussars. Okay. The Austrians are soon driven back, but a sudden counterattack nearly bags General Bonaparte himself. Wow. A possibly dramatized account has him hopping over fences with one boot on to evade the hussars. Wow. This lucky escape leads to the formation of an elite cavalry detachment to act as Napoleon's personal escort. Which makes sense. They are named the Compagnie des Guides à Cheval. Their commander is a young cavalry captain named Jean-Baptiste Bessier, yep. Yeah. In time, this unit will become the famous chasseur à cheval of the Imperial Guard. Yeah. The Emperor's ever-present bodyguard on campaign. Which I think saved Napoleon when the Russians tried to capture him, right? I believe so, right? These are very elite horsemen. I have to provide for the defense of Mantua, the key to Italy. Okay. Makes sense. And why is it the key to Italy? I mean, it's a very strong position in the middle of sort of the whole northern Italy. And it's a protective strate strategic position to protect southern Italy, right? 
the Italian boot, right? So if Napoleon gets Mantua, then I mean, that's sort of Na Napoleon getting Northern Italy and Southern Italy, right? And what Austrians can do is just move back to East to go to Austria, right? To protect Austria. Well, let's see what, what happens here, right? Taken by surprise by the crossing at Borghetto, Bolio begins a withdrawal to a new defensive line in the Adige okay. Valley. However, at Mantua, he leaves behind a reinforced garrison, well supplied okay, that's good. and ready to withstand a siege of at least two months. Two months? Napoleon wants everything to go quickly, so two months, maybe Napoleon doesn't have that. So Napoleon can't concentrate his force. But what you don't want is a prolonged siege for either parties. Obviously, Mantua can hold up two months, but still, you would have a lot of soldiers that you could have used somewhere else to just die of disease in the garrison. But it's strategic, okay. Napoleon cannot bypass Look at that. Mantua. Its garrison is too powerful. But the fortress city will be a tough nut to crack. It's literally on the water. Surrounded on three sides by a lake and on the other by malarial marshland. Yeah. The most unhealthy place in Italy, Napoleon tells the directory. His biggest problem is his lack of heavy siege artillery. Most of these guns are in Milan, bombarding the Austrians, still hold up in the citadel. Ah. Uh, More guns. Sort of a George Washington situation here, right? George Washington needed uh, big guns in Boston, right? Hmm. Were supposed Pretty cool. to arrive by sea, but have been intercepted by British warships, commanded yep. by a certain Commodore Horatio Nelson. Wow. Since April, Napoleon has launched three successful offensives, marched more than 200 miles, yep. and won 10 battles. But finally, Just like that. outside the walls of Mantua, he is brought to a halt. Yeah, a siege. And the demands on his limited force are growing. He's very he spread out. the siege of Mantua, even though its guns outnumber his own and no direct yep. assault can be made. He must protect his lines of communication back to France. Yep. And guard against further revolt in Lombardy. And he must be ready to face the Austrians, who are receiving reinforcements from Germany, and will soon... And again, think about this. The Austrians are getting reinforcement. Bonaparte, Napoleon, probably gets less reinforcements than the troops that he's losing to either being killed or wounded or prisoners or missing, right? Because, again, still at this point, I think... Napoleon's front in Italy is secondary to the one in the Rhine, right? But okay. Uh oh. To add to his problems, the French Directory demands that he lead an expedition to central and southern Italy. East of this is just. I don't know what the Directory is thinking. Obviously, there are a lot of there are a lot of corruption there, right? But. If they want Napoleon to protect an attack against Austrians, or they want him to just defend defend against Austrians, obviously. But now that he succeeded, they probably want him to attack as well, right? But does he get the reinforcements and the heavy guns that he needs? Probably some, but again, less than he is losing. So now they want him to attack Kingdom of Naples as well. Wow. A threatened military occupation. Unless these states cough up huge sums to help fund the French war effort. Makes sense, but... Napoleon violently wow. opposes the idea. Yeah. Marching troops the length of Italy in high summer, he warns, will end in sickness and death. Yep. Like in Russia. Strong words alone persuade Naples to sign an armistice. And in okay. the end, Napoleon doesn't even have to go as far as Rome. The French wow. march through the Duchy of Modena, the Papal States, and the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, raising hmm. more than 40 million francs in tribute from states that are powerless to resist. I mean, that's pretty good, but 
But I don't understand. Why aren't the Austrians attacking? Because I would guess that Napoleon is personally going to Moderna and Naples states and Tuscany, right? And taking this tribute. So why aren't they attacking? Even if Napoleon was there, why aren't they attacking? Maybe they are hesitant. Maybe they also got the orders just to not attack in Italy, just to defend so they can reinforce the Rhine and attack in the Rhine. Maybe, the, to me, it looks like this, right? It looks like this. On the French side, the French are getting the green light in the Rhine, in the in nowadays Germany, to attack. But in the south, in northern Italy, Napoleon is getting the okay to just defend before he got these victories, right? But just to defend. And I feel like the Austrians got the same message, right? In Northern Italy, you should just defend Italy, right? But in the north, in nowadays Germany, you should attack, right? So they're both just concentrating in the north. But now that Napoleon has won victories here, now the Austrians are str now they now they have to divide their forces, right? Which could be good for the Rhine or bad. I don't know. Napoleon dines in Florence with the Grand Duke before wow. returning to Milan. There he is reunited with his wife Josephine, who's uh -oh. arrived from Paris, discreetly accompanied by her new lover. Uh oh. Napoleon does not linger in Milan. That's good. Its citadel has finally fallen, freeing up his siege guns. Okay. His troops have seized another 150 guns from the forts of central Italy. Think again though, it's it's uh, the end of June, so let's say July. Since the 11th or 10th of April to July. Four months, three months and whatnot, right? He has won victories, pushed back the Austrians, has got Milan to fall, right? The Citadel. And has gotten tribute and money from the rest of Italy, right? The Italian boot. So Napoleon is in good financial. Financially, he's pretty good, right? But again, he still needs troops. But, you know. Napoleon can now make serious plans to take Mantua. And yep. he has no time to lose. In the Tyrol, the reinforced Austrian army is beginning to stir. Under a new commander. Bolio is gone. Okay. Now, 72-year-old Field Marshal Count von Wurmser is in command. A career... Either this could be very good for the Austrians, or it could be very badly. At this age, he, when he was younger, he learned a certain way how to fight in war, right? In campaigns. I don't know if he has learned throughout the decades to fight what Napoleon is fighting, or at least defend against what Napoleon is doing, or, at, or learned... How Napoleon went against the Austrians, right? Maybe he's that type of uh, field marshal, right? That learns from his enemies early on. Because there had to be a reason why he got to be in command here in northern Italy, right? But let's see. He just cavalryman, vigorous okay. beyond his years, and determined to avenge Austrian defeats in Italy. Makes sense. The storm is beginning to gather. Okay. Second of July. Since crossing the Mincho, Napoleon has reorganized and redeployed his forces. That's General good. Masena's division is near Rivoli, watching the road to the Tyrol. Two of okay. his brigades under General Sare are at Salo, watching the western side of Lake Garda. General Despinois's division is in support at Pesquiera. General Augereau's division is around Leniago, watching the eastern approaches, while Kilmaine's cavalry mounts patrols. General Serrurier's division carries out the siege of Mantua itself. 
One thing though, to me, it looks like Napoleon is a little bit too forward. I understand he has to be more forward because he has Mantua under siege. But it looks like, it looks on paper that he's strong and has a strong defensive position. But if the Austrians are concentrating and attacking in the west of the Lake Garda with against the 4,400 soldiers, I mean, that's... That's basically the Austrians being behind the French lines, right? And almost taking Napoleon, right? So let's see. But Look at that. Napoleon's hopes for a rapid conclusion to the siege are in vain. The yep. Austrian garrison conducts a skillful and active defense, raiding French entrenchments and seizing supplies. Murat, recently promoted to brigadier general, Plans okay. to lead a group of men in Austrian uniform across the lake at night wow. to take the guards by surprise. Of course he's going to do that. The abandoned when the water level suddenly drops. Uh-oh. The French step up their bombardment of the city, firing more than a thousand cannonballs and mortar shells in one six-hour period. Wow. That, I mean, that's all you can do, right? Being battered to pieces. Yep. Its walls are not yet breached. Nope. Napoleon is out of time. Field Marshal Wurmser is finally uh -oh. marching to Mantua's aid. He has divided his army into four columns. Two central columns are advancing down the Adige Valley directly towards Mantua. Okay. Another column to the east is making a wide flanking march. Okay. While a fourth column, under General Kostanovic, advances down the western shore of Lake Garda, planning to seize Brescia and cut Napoleon's line of retreat. Look at this. This is exactly what I was saying. Napoleon is a little bit spread out, which makes sense because he's protecting the siege. But also, a concentration of force because the Austrians have gotten reinforcements. You can see that, right? I mean... West of Lake Garda, I mean, Napoleon has 5,500 men there, or whatever it was, 4,400. I mean, against 18,000. And it's attacking the headquarters of Napoleon. To then link up with Davidovich, right? With 24,000 soldiers. And they're attacking Napoleon's strongest force of 15,000, but still. Wow. Let's see how this battle turns out, right? Massena comes under heavy attack and, severely outnumbered, abandons Rivoli and begins a fighting retreat. That makes sense. As soon as the news reaches Napoleon, he races to Castelnuovo, ordering Augereau, Despinois, and Kilmaine to join him as fast as possible. That makes sense. Concentrate your but force. Suddenly, it is Kostanovich's column that's emerging as the greatest threat. Yep. General Sae's troops at Salo are heavily outnumbered. They put up Look a at stiff that. resistance, but are forced to withdraw. Imagine fighting there. The next day, Austrian troops surprise the French at Brescia. They take the town, as well as an army hospital containing 2,000 wow. French sick and wounded. That's going to hit the morale of the French soldiers. In their eyes, which makes sense, Napoleon can't even protect the wounded soldiers so imagine you being a soldier in napoleon's army here and you have probably friends or acquaintances that are injured and in field hospitals and the hospital is sort of behind the lines right although they they got captured right but think about this you're thinking of if i get injured and I'm, a f I'm in a field hospital, will I also get captured, right? That's what you're thinking. This is a fall of morale, right? Even Napoleon's Look at wife, that. Josephine, en route to Brescia, is nearly captured in the chaos. Wow. Imagine if she was. Has wrong-footed Napoleon. Yep. Already outnumbered, he's lost 5,000 casualties. His left flank is in tatters. And there's a real possibility he may be encircled. It's the greatest crisis he has faced as an army commander. Yep. It will force him to make an agonizing decision. Any lesser general 
would either just retreat all the way west to have a defensive line of uh, like by Milan, right? Any lesser general would either surrender or flee. Let's see what Napoleon does, right? Every moment is precious. The enemies have broken through our line in three places. Yeah. On the 31st of July, after two months of blood, sweat and sacrifice, General Serrurier is ordered to abandon the siege of Mantua. He is to send two of Makes his sense. brigades to reinforce Massena and Ogero and withdraw with the rest of his troops to guard the army's line of retreat. I mean, think about this. How long have they been... How, how long have they sieged Mantua? I don't know, maybe a month? Right? The morale hit here is also very high. But obviously Napoleon needs the troops and the cannon and the cavalry. Right? 179 guns plus ammunition and supplies which cannot be moved are to be buried or tipped into wow. the marshes. And any lesser general here would go into the sunken cost fallacy, right? Meaning we have done this siege for a month. We have lost these many men, these a lot of supplies, these amount of cannon, whatever. We need to keep going with the siege, even though we're being out, out, uh, outgunned, outmanned everywhere else. We need to keep the siege going. Because if we win the siege, we can turn around and attack the enemy. But Napoleon is smart and strategical here of leaving Mantua. Makes sense. Napoleon needs every man he can get. Yep. Because in the midst of the crisis, he has spotted an opportunity. Okay. Kostanovich's advance has caught him off guard. But Lake Garda separates him from the rest of the Austrian army. Yep. Napoleon will concentrate his forces against Kostanovich, beat him in battle, then pivot again to take on Wermser. And again, here you have to be quick. Here you have to be smart. And this is a very famous Napoleon tactic, right? Concentrate your force to attack either the lesser or the stronger force, probably the lesser force. Hold back with some of your men on the stronger force to hold them back and then just destroy the lesser force, turn around and attack the bigger force with everything you got. This has to be coordination, this has to be discipline, morale, everything has to go good here. You have to have a good commander, right? Like any lesser general again here would probably just escape, would just go west, save himself and the men or whatever, fight another day. But Napoleon is fighting another day by winning the day. Okay. The French divisions are soon on the move. Kostanovich's troops reach Lonato, but here they encounter Massena's vanguard. Wow. The Austrians come under heavy attack, and with Look French reinforcements arriving, they have to pull back. Yep. The next day, the French retake Brescia along with most of their supplies, sick and wounded. There you go. Then Morale boost. Napoleon catches a lucky break. Uh-oh. I mean, look at this though. This could go disastrously wrong, right? Vermsa even have... the He has more force than the than Kostanovich, right? He has like, what was it, 24,000? Let's say it's 20,000, right? Look at this. And obviously Napoleon has the river there and they can defend their cities by the riverbanks. But still, he is trusting a lot on his, less, on, on his lower commander, right? There has been on Massena's heels, carrying yep. his rear guard as far as Pesquera. But now he receives reports there are French forces massing between him and Ah, uh-oh. Mantua is his priority. Yep. So he swings south, away from Kostanovich, towards a city Napoleon has already abandoned. This is one problem where you have strict planning, which you can't sort of change depending on the situation you are in. Because their plan was to 
three-pronged offensive to get to Mantua. Not to destroy Napoleon, I don't think. Just to get to Mantua to lift the siege. But the siege had already been lifted by Napoleon. And now they're attacking. Wurmser, at this point, could have just gone west and attacked Napoleon. But also, bad information is going to make you do this. And strict planning. But also, sometimes strict planning is good. But at this... Here... He should have gone west, but he got bad information. He needed to lift the siege of Mantua. He went south. By the time Vermser realizes his error, it's too late. Yep. He has, he has given Napoleon, Napoleon time. 24 crucial hours. Yep. A blunder for which he will pay dearly. Nothing is lost while courage remains. This is true. Yep. Wow. Yeah. See? Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> wow. A lot of them will be slaughtered, but still. Would you not put... If you were in that situation and you were under Napoleon at this time, wouldn't you just charge with your bayonet? You probably would. Right? And it's not pride. You would just do it. You respect Napoleon. Even at this time, he has given you victories, money probably, food, shelter, clothes. You would do it. Wow. Bad communications. What he should have done here, if they had good communication, was to have a def defensive position, right? Probably take Salo, pull back a little bit of his troops, have a defensive pos position, wait for Vermsa, and Vermsa is sort of encircling Napoleon then, right? But bad communication, a strict plan, right? Now, I'm just going to sort of predict what's going to happen here, right? So Kostanovich is retreating up through the Lake Garda to get east side of it, right? What is Vermsa going to do while he's marching? He's going to attack and Napoleon is going to concentrate his force and defeat Vermsa. And then Vermsa is going to retreat east or to Mantua to protect Mantua because that was his goal, right? And then Kostanovich is going to then be defeated again but on the east side of Lake Garda. By Napoleon or he's going to retreat. When he heard about Vermsa. Wow. This is a fait accompli. Okay, here we have the battle. Look at that. Nice hill. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. The 32nd Demi Brigade. Ah. 
Yeah. And we know at Eilau he did like something even not bad, but I mean just walking straight into a blizzard or a blizzard came and it just walked straight into one of the largest gun duels or cannon duels in history up to that point. That was a slaughter. But wow. He earns his name here. Okay, that's good. Yep. And what does... Ojuro says this to Napoleon. But what does Napoleon say to the direct directory? The same thing. Right? But you know... Uh oh. Wow. Wow. Wow, what a comedy skit here, right? And imagine if the Austrian took Napoleon captured. Imagine what history would be, right? Wow. Wow. And here again, would Worms go east and protect the line there, or would he and wait for Kostanovich to come? What is he going to do? Let's see. Uh, uh oh. Ah, but his reasoning is sound, but what does Kostanovich do? He goes around Lake Garda, which obviously you can fault him or can't, right? And again, what would Vermsa do? His objective is to protect Mantua. If he goes east to the river, he's sort of not protecting Mantua, right? You can understand both here, but... They're in a bad situ situation when they're against Napoleon. Yep. Yep. For eight days we have been in saddle. We do not to allow the enemy rest unless we have destroyed him. Wow. Okay. Good defensive position. Weak in the middle though, but... Okay. Sort of a core. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Ah. Uh oh. Makes sense, but uh oh. Yep.
Wow. Brilliant. Wow. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's good. Wow. And Napoleon is the artillery guy. But again though, the Austrians has... They had like 60 guns and Napoleon had like 19. But Napoleon concentrated... Or he is famous of concentrating his guns on... A fixed position right on a single position right instead of spreading it out which makes sense in theory and sometimes it works right because you're putting equal amount of pressure on the line although sometimes you don't want that sometimes you just want concentrated fire on a position and if that breaks you can then just move the gun somewhere else and attack there which Napoleon does here right he takes a very very good defensive position with concentrated fire. Yep. Wow. Wow. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yep. 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 Wow. Wow. But I mean, he did good, right? But Napoleon was just better. And when push comes to shove, Vermsa just couldn't react. Maybe he was shocked, caught it up in the moment, right? Wow. Okay. Sacrificing them. Yeah, they're exhausted. Yep. Okay. Wow. Three to one almost. Wow. The Austrian army has disappeared like a dream. And the Italy that is that it threatened is now quiet. Okay. Napoleon probably gets reinforcement now. Maybe. Vermsa's army finds temporary refuge behind the Mincho River. Yep. But Napoleon immediately resumes the attack. Wow. Massena is sent north to relieve the French garrison at Peschiera and yep. threaten Vermsa's line of retreat. Uh -oh. The Austrian general has had enough. After ensuring the garrison of Mantua is fully resupplied and reinforced, he begins his withdrawal to the Tyrol to regroup okay. and rethink. The French Makes sense. at his heels all the way. But the French are exhausted. Napoleon though. has just endured his toughest challenge yet as an army yep. commander. And though initially wrong footed by his adversary, he's displayed brilliant flexibility and his yep. usual energy to weather the crisis and then triumph. But Mantua remains the key to Italy. Yep. And while it stands unconquered, the Austrians will do everything in their power to save it. Vermsa will be back, 
and when he returns, he'll find himself on a collision course with Napoleon. Uh oh. As he launches his own attack on Austria itself. Wow. Wow. That was amazing. I mean, Napoleon did very good here. I mean, he was wrong footed. And he just kept pushing, pushing, and pushing, right? Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.